Hey there, scientists. Today, we are peeling the skin back on an elephant for a second time to look at the bones and the muscles. You are going to be able to identify the bones and the muscles of an elephant, and you are going to be able to describe the functions served by those bones and muscles. Let's get to this, scientists. Here we go. Hey there, scientists. I'm Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's classroom. Today, we are peeling the skin off of an elephant again, and this time we're not looking at the internal organs, but what we are doing is we are looking at the bones and the muscles, where you are going to identify the bones and the muscles inside of the elephant, and you are going to be able to describe the functions served by those bones and muscles. Now, to get us started today, uh, the first thing I want you to think about is I want you to think about what happens if you break a bone or you pull a muscle. I mean, immediately I think the first thing that we can all agree on is it hurts. It doesn't feel good, it's not comfortable, it's frustrating, it's annoying, and it slows you down for quite a while, whether it's four to six to eight to 12 weeks to recover from those injuries. Yeah, and, and, and that healing process is a really big and interesting aspect of our bones and muscles is that the fact that our body can actually fix and heal itself if given enough time. So yes, thinking about bones and muscles and today we're gonna pull the slider and we are going to peel the skin back on the elephant. Now, I know we've done this before but I will tell you that for some reason the elephant is just a little bit creepier when you look at the bones and the muscles than when you look at the organs. And I think you're going to figure out what it is, but it's, it's all in the eyeball. Let me just, here we go. Ready? And there we go. We are looking at the internal bones and muscles of our elephant. We're going to walk through, we're going to identify each of these different bones and these muscle sections. And yes, I know right now, all you can look at is the eyeball. I know. It, it, it's, just, it's just there. It's haunting. All right. <clears throat> so first question we're asking ourselves is, are bones harder or are they softer than the internal organs? So just think about that one. You can pause the video if you want. You can shout out your answer. You can tell it's your stuffed animal. You can talk to your shoe, whatever you need to do. If the internal organs were included in this picture, where would they be? Okay, again, pause the video, talk to your other shoe. You don't want them getting lonely. And what do you think the main functions of the bones are? We know that the bones make up the skeleton. We know that the bones and there are there to support the elephant's body and to protect those internal organs. Because yes, if we were thinking about our organs from our last lesson, we would notice that they're all going to be on the inside of those bones, of those structures which are meant to protect them. Those bones are meant to protect those organs because they are soft and they're so important for our function, for life, for the, for the elephant, for mammals, uh, for animals to be able to do the things that they need to do. They need their brain to function. They need their heart. They need their liver. They need their intestines. <clears throat> and those things that we talked about in our last lesson. So, yeah, today we're going to look specifically at each of these different bones and muscle sections and understand what it is that they do in order to make life easy for the elephant. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at all of the bones that make up the elephant. So first, we can start here. This is the backbone, okay? The backbone supports the elephant's body 
and protects the nerve cord. So the cord that runs from the brain through the rest of the body for all of the nerves to know what everything is supposed to do. So your brain can stay in contact with the rest of your limbs. The backbone can bend because it is made up of separate bones called vertebrae. The flexible backbone lets the elephant move in many different ways. So if you were going to ask somebody which bone runs the length of the elephant's back, the answer is the backbone. All right. And then here we have the ribs. The ribs protect the heart and the lungs. So if we were going to ask ourselves or ask somebody the question, which bones surround the heart and the lungs? Well, that's going to be the ribs. They're going to be the ones that surround the heart and the lungs. We saw that last time. We can compare this image with our previous image of those organs, and we can see that that's the major function of the ribs. All right. The skull. The bones of the skull protect the elephant's brain. Remember from our last session, the brain is the part that coordinates all of the functions inside of the elephant or inside of you. And that brain is really important. What we're finding here is that there's actually a bone in place to protect that because that organ is so important. All right. Next up, we're looking at the jaw. The jaw bones support the teeth and allow the elephant to open its mouth and to chew its food. Again, we looked at the teeth last time. We found out how important the teeth are in order for the elephant to be able to start the process of digestion. And we have a bone inside of that jaw to be able to hold those teeth and to allow the elephant to open and close its mouth. All right, now we're looking at the feet, okay? An elephant's feet are made up of many bones, including toe bones. Notice that the toes point downward, so the elephant walks on the tips of its toes. The bones point downward and the elephant walks on the tips of its bone, or the tips of its toes. All right, and then right here, this bone right here is the pelvis. So the bones of the pelvis are beneath the muscles. The pelvis provides a frame that supports the back legs. Joints in the pelvis allow the elephant to move its legs so it can walk or swim. So we have all of these bones here that give the elephant structure and support and all of the bones make up a skeleton. All the bones together make up the elephant's skeleton. The muscles are attached to the bones and work with the bones to move the parts of the elephant's body. Okay, so there's some questions we need to ask ourselves so that we can dig a little bit deeper. And it has to do with the structures of the bones and the structures of the muscles. So the structure of a bone, the outside of a long leg bone is hard and compact. The inside of the bone is spongy. Blood vessels in the spongy part of the bone bring nutrients and oxygen to the bone. And then the other piece we're looking at here is the muscles, skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones. When a skeletal muscle contracts, it pulls on the bone and makes it move. So what happens when a skeletal muscle contracts? Well, when it contracts, that's when the bones move, that's when the body moves, that's when the elephant moves. What do the ribs, the backbone, and the skull all have in common? So we talked about that. We have the ribs, we have the skull, we have the backbone. What do they all have in common? They're all there to protect important organs and important parts of our body. So they're there for protection. What do the pelvis, the backbone, and the jawbones have in common? The pelvis, the backbone, and the jawbone. 
They support other structures and they allow movement that helps the elephant to survive. Today, we have been working to understand and to identify bones and muscles of an elephant. We also are working so that you can describe the functions served by the bones and the muscles of an elephant. As you continue to work through this, as you continue to read through this lesson and do the activities, um, I encourage you to, again, think about other mammals. Do other mammals have these similar structures? Do other mammals have these similar bones? Do other mammals have these similar muscles or muscles in similar places? The other big question I want you to think about is, do you think an elephant would have a better chance of surviving with a broken rib or a broken jaw? And why? And again, as a critical scientist, as a critical thinker, you are trying to make sense and look deeply and critically at all of these elements to really be able to understand, to make those connections between the different lessons and between different animals. Are there things that we could learn about a broken rib or a broken jawbone on an elephant that could apply to a human? All right. As you continue to work through this, make sure that you understand how to identify these muscles and identify these bones. Make sure that you know what the structure of a bone is and why those muscles are important. Think critically, scientists. Think carefully. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>